Hey everybody, and welcome to my FTL Meets SG1 series, where I'm guaranteed to sound like a total idiot, but that's okay. Because being nerdy and having fun is what this series is all about, right? Now, our heroes have been tasked with the dangerous mission of securing some sort of very important data to stop the Lucian Alliance. They don't really know what the data is, they don't know what's in the box, but it doesn't matter. Somebody, somewhere, said it's important, and that's enough for our heroes. That'll send them on to an epic adventure. Now, if you remember from our last episode, our heroes already got themselves in a bit of a pickle. But, luckily enough, everybody teamed up, and they managed to survive. Now, let's head on and see what new adventures await the team, shall we? So, after that last disaster, you know, when there was like lots of fire and everybody almost died from oxygen deprivation? Well, you know, I think a group meeting's inevitable, guys. Jack might be calling one soon. Meanwhile, Sam and Daniel here, they're just chilling in the med bay. Cause you know Daniel being Daniel, when he was extinguishing those fires, of course he got his hand burned. So now you need Sam to kinda take care of him. And that's what they're doing. But of course, that's when Jack kinda decides to storm into the med bay in his rage, and he's like, Carter! Why the hell was half my ship on fire? And Daniel's like, your ship? <laughs> Jack's like, did you just say something? And he's like, no. You know, with all the, the innocent face and all that. And then, then Carter, of course, he's like, <clears throat> Well, with all due respect, sir, you insisted on keeping the weapons to maximum. Well, there wasn't just enough power, you know, for the engines. Jack's like, oh, yeah? So you'd rather fly around defenseless, you know, with no weapons and get destroyed? And he's like, that's not what I meant, sir. And Daniel, of course, you know, he has to butt in. Uh, Jack, you know she's right. We destroyed the drone, so there really was no need to keep weapons to maximum power. And then Jack's like, you know, he doesn't care what they think, he knows he's right. He knows it was a good idea to keep weapons on full power, so he's like, well, Captain Kirk always keeps his weapons on full power. And Daniel's like, no he doesn't. And Jack's like, yes he does. No he doesn't. Does. Doesn't. Does. Do Guys, what am I doing? Okay, let's play the game. <laughs> let's move Carter to the engine room. Daniel's gonna go to the bridge, his hand's fine. And Jack's going back to weapons. And I think it's time to jump, because, yeah, we have data to deliver, and, uh, the guys are dilly-dallying too much, right? So let's have them jump here and see what awaits them in this vast, vast space. The scanners are showing intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. No match for them can be found in the database. Hmm. Are we gonna investigate, or are we gonna ignore it? Hmm. We might investigate. Let's have a look. You land a small shuttle in an enormous field whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six-legged, horse-like animals. Could they be what your scans picked up? Oh, hmm. Strange animals. Well, we all know what Jack's like, right? He's right there. He's got his gun aimed. He's like, Daniel, stay away from the aliens. They're dangerous. And Daniel's like, but Jack, we gotta communicate, you know? So we're gonna try and communicate peacefully, because... Daniel does whatever the hell he wants, and he gets whatever the hell he wants, so that's what's gonna happen. None of your attempts to communicate seem to work. Looks like Daniel can't talk with horses. He's not quite the horse whisperer. Jack knew this, of course, but he's not gonna break his dreams, right? So the horses stare at you silently as you prepare to leave. One of the creature canters forward and forcefully nudges you away from the ship. He seems to want you to follow him. Well, I guess Daniel pulled out that Snickers bar. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Eventually, the creatures guide you to an old NG ship's crash site. Inside, you are able to find and react... What? Find and reactivate an NG? Ooh. So, basically, with Daniel sharing his Snicker bars with the six-legged horses, one of them took us to this kind of a robot. And his name is Aeon, who is now our new ally. Nice! That's good. That's good. Now Jack, of course, he doesn't trust it. He, he thinks something's up. He thinks it's fishy. Daniel, Daniel, he trusts everyone. Jack, Jack, leave the alien alone. Leave him alone. He helped us. He's gonna help us. It'll be fine. I promise you. Just have a little faith, Jack. Jack's like, fine. I'm gonna fucking... 
change the cameras around so that I can keep an eye on him. So he's kind of messing around with the cameras. Of course he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Carter, get the hell over here and fix those cameras for me. So Carter's like, oh, fine, I'm going to do the cameras. Meanwhile, Daniel's having a lovely conversation with his newfound friend. And everybody's happy again, except for Jack. But he's never happy, is he? Unless he's at home and chilling with the Simpsons. But he's not. He's stuck on a ship with everybody. And he's going to have to man up. Right, now everybody's back to work. Our new friend is being spied upon by Jack. And we're good to jump again, guys. So let's move on to up here. This looks like a good point to jump to. Ooh, maybe there's some combat. Jack's dying for some combat now. He has rage, and he needs to channel his rage into big things that go boom. You see a civilian space station with heavy damage. You receive a message. We've been hit hard by the war. We need more drone parts to speed up our repairs. We'll buy some from you if you have extra. Do we want to give them drone parts? Well, Carter is kind of like, well, sir, we have a long journey in front of us. We might not have enough drone parts in case we run into the Lucian Alliance. Uh, you're right, Carter. We need those drone parts. We need to be able to defend ourselves. Daniel. Well, do I even have to say what Daniel's going to say, guys? I think it's obvious, right? We're not going to sell all our drone parts, but we're not going to leave them hanging. So we're going to sell some of our parts, because... We've got Daniel with us, right? Moving on, we now have some stuff to upgrade the ship with. So Carter's gonna get to work on... Let's see, what are we gonna have done? Hmm... So it would be a good thing to upgrade our doors. Yeah, after that fire disaster, Jack made some decisions. And he decided to leave all the decision making up to Carter. So she decided to install better doors. So that would take the fire a lot more time to spread through our ship. Nice. That's a good upgrade, right guys? Yeah. Right. Onwards moves the team. Now remember when they were asked to help out some people in the last episode? Well, this is it. This is that mission. So they finally arrive at their quest point And they find a mantis encampment. But... There are far too many of them to count accurately. You send a long-range message back to the settlement, that's of course Daniel, with your findings, but unfortunately there's not much you can do. It would be suicide to attack directly. So yeah, Jack was all like, come on guys, we got this, let's get rid of these guys. But then Carter was like, mm, sir, we're heavily outnumbered. I don't think it's a good plan, do you know, to attack them head on. So I think it's best that we just leave before they see us. And, and Daniel's like, mm, I don't know, but, but what if there's people on the planet that need our help? And Jack's like, Daniel, we can't take the risk. Carter's right, there's way too much people. But we're not gonna leave, we're gonna bombard them. We're gonna leave our mark here, we're gonna piss people off. Because that's what we do, we're SG-1, we piss off the bad guys. Let's go. You fire at their fuel depot, but a shot from their surface rips the missile to shreds. Uh-oh. They must have a planetary defense system set up already, says Carter. You try to get away, but a nearby patrol ship moves in to attack. Because Daniel was fiddling with the controls too long, he couldn't quite make the jump to FTL, so we're stuck now and we're gonna have to defend ourselves. And oh dear god, we're being bored about an alien. Daniel's gonna have a look see and see what's going on. Meanwhile, Jack's gonna fire the weapons and we're gonna take out their weapon systems. And we just did that. Nice one. Jack's on it. Meanwhile, Daniel there is kind of dying. And what the hell is he doing? Okay, Jack needs to go help. Daniel! Stop talking to the alien! Start killing him! Yay! We destroyed the ship. Now, Daniel, you get the hell out of there before you die! Uh oh. So that's when Daniel kind of went unconscious, guys. That's not a good thing, right? Jack's furious, man. Jack is furious. He went on an alien. He pounced him like a bad man. And now Daniel's somewhere on the floor here. You can't see him, guys, but Jack's gonna drag him over to the med bay. Don't worry, he'll be fine. Luckily, we have this alien machine with us. I'm sure he can figure something out, and hopefully, the crew can get Daniel back. Oh boy. See, that's what you get when you try to communicate with aliens, guys, instead of fighting them off. Stuff like that happens. Jack was too late. He didn't notice it. He was keeping an eye on our new alien friend. He didn't watch that, and he didn't see what was going on until it was too late. He rushed in there trying to save him. He was like, no! And he pulled out his M9, and he opened up fire on the alien, and he killed the alien. And there was blood everywhere, and Daniel was unconscious on the ground. But luckily, he's in the med bay now. We won't know if he'll survive. We'll see in the next episode, guys. See you next time. And thanks for watching.